Welcome to the Deep Dive. If you're tuning in, you likely understand the ongoing importance of staying informed about the fight against HIV. Today, we're taking a focused look at the current state of HIV vaccine trials and um, some really promising progress in prevention and treatment strategies. We've gathered a range of sources that give us a snapshot of where things stood around April of 2025. That's right. What immediately struck me, looking at the information you compiled, is the uh, sheer scale of research underway. Our goal today is to sort of break down these complex developments for you, concentrating on the most significant HIV vaccine clinical trials and the encouraging advancements in how we prevent and treat HIV. It really underscores the continued global effort to address this virus. Absolutely. It can feel like a lot to take in, but that's why we're here to extract the essential insights. Let's start with some good news. As of April 2025, there were over 20 HIV vaccine clinical trials happening worldwide. That number really highlights the breadth of scientific exploration in this field. It does. And what's fascinating is the diversity of approaches being explored. These aren't all trying the same thing. They're investigating different scientific principles and technologies. To give you a clearer picture, let's uh, dive into some specific examples. OK, let's start by unpacking the VIR 1388 phase one trial. This one uses a cytomegalovirus or CMV vector. What's the uh, thinking behind using that particular virus as a delivery system? Well, the interesting thing about using a CMV vector is that CMV, while a common virus, it's been engineered in this context to act like, like a delivery truck for the HIV vaccine material. The hope is that it will trigger a really robust T cell response in the body. T cells are you know, a crucial part of our immune system for fighting viral infections like HIV. Right. This trial was being conducted in the United States and South Africa and started back in September 2023. It's a collaborative effort involving Green Biotechnology, NIAID, and uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. That's a significant group of organizations involved. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another trial that stood out is the pre-EPVAC trial. It sounds innovative because it's testing experimental vaccines while also um, providing participants with proven prevention methods. Tell us more about that. Yeah, this trial addresses a really important question. Can we effectively evaluate new vaccines while still ensuring the well-being of participants by offering them existing prevention tools? The pre-PVAC trial is designed to do just that. It's testing two experimental HIV vaccines alongside two different forms of pre-exposure prophylaxis, or PP. Ah, PP, okay. This allows researchers to see if the vaccines are effective while also protecting the participants. It's a large-scale trial, over 1,500 participants aged 18 to 40 in South Africa, Uganda, and Tanzania. Enrollment started back in December 2020. Wow, yeah. The sponsor is the European and Developing Countries Clinical Trials Partnership, or EDCTP. That approach seems, well, it seems to balance the need for scientific progress with important ethical considerations. Very smart. Now let's turn to the HB502, HB501 phase 1B trial, which mentions arenavirus vectors. What are those and why are they being used here? What's intriguing here is the use of arenavirus vectors. These are a different type of virus altogether. And in this case, they've been engineered to carry genetic material from HIV to uh, trigger an immune response. Mm -hmm. This phase 1B trial is focused on assessing the safety of these vaccine candidates, HB502 and HB501, and how well they can generate an immune response against HIV. Okay. It's taking place in the United States and began in November 2025, sponsored by Hugipa Biotech GmbH. So I've seen researchers explore different kinds of these viral delivery trucks, hoping to find the most effective way to teach the immune system to recognize and fight HIV. It's fascinating to see these different viral platforms being explored, like you said, to deliver the vaccine payload. Moving on, we have a couple of trials from the HIV Vaccine Trials Network, or HVTN. Let's start with the HVTN-139 trial. All right, HVTN-139 is another key trial focusing on two main things, safety and immunogenicity. Immunogenicity, uh, simply put, is how well a vaccine can trigger an immune response in the body. Mm -hmm. This trial is examining several HIV vaccine candidates, including ADC6 HIV GP140 and AD7 HIV GP140. It's being conducted in South Africa, started in November 2021, and is expected to continue until uh, November 2025. The sponsors are HVTN and NIID. And then there's the HVTN 300 trial. This one had an end date listed as January 2024. What was the primary focus of this particular trial? HVTN 300 was a phase one trial specifically designed to evaluate the CH505TF HIV vaccine candidate. Yeah. Again, the main goals were to determine if it was safe and what kind of immune response it could produce. Got it. This trial took place in the United States, ran from May 2021 to January 2024, and was sponsored by NIID. We also have the IAVIC 101 trial, which involved uh, the pharmaceutical company GSK, what was being investigated in that study. 
The IAVI C101 trial was centered on the BG505 SOSIP GT1.1 GP140 vaccine candidate. Now, this candidate is designed to induce what we call broadly neutralizing antibodies, or BNABs. Ah, uh -uh, BNABs, right. Yeah, these are special types of antibodies that have the, well, the re remarkable ability to recognize and block many different strains of HIV, which is why they're a major focus in vaccine research. Makes sense. The trial was conducted in the Netherlands and the United States, running from August 2020 to December 2023, with sponsorship from both GSK and IAVI. Now, some of the trials planned for later in our timeline sound particularly novel. Let's talk about the GRAID AVA in one trial. What makes this one stand out? Oh, what's notable about the GRAID AVA in one trial is that it's using a gorilla adenovirus vector. A gorilla adenovirus. Interesting. Yeah, this is yet another approach to delivering the vaccine material, and researchers are exploring it to see if a different source of adenovirus might be more effective at triggering a strong immune response. This phase one trial was planned for South Africa and Zimbabwe with a start date in December 2026, so it hadn't yet begun enrolling participants as of April 2025. It's sponsored by IAVI. It's kind of like trying different delivery companies, yeah. <laughs> Hoping one will be the most efficient at getting the immune system to learn how to fight HIV. Good analogy. Okay, another IAVI-sponsored trial is the hiv NV Mosaic Immunogens Phase 1 trial, also planned for Uganda and Zimbabwe. What's the idea behind using mosaic immunogens? This is a really interesting strategy. Think of HIV as a constantly evolving target, right? It has oh. many different genetic strains. Mm -hmm. Mosaic immunogens are designed to cover a broader range of this genetic diversity. The idea is to create vaccine components that can elicit immune responses effective against many different versions of HIV. This phase one trial was set to evaluate the safety and how well these mosaic immunogens MOS1-CP, MOS2-CP, and M3-SIP8 could trigger an immune response, especially when combined with an adjuvant called MPLA5. Adjuvant. That's like a helper substance. Exactly. Adjuvants are like helpers added to the vaccine to give your immune system an extra boost and make the vaccine more effective. This trial was planned to start in December 2025. So it's about creating a vaccine that can teach the immune system to recognize a wider variety of HIV outfits, so to speak. Clever. We also have the 426C.modcore C4B phase one trial. What can you tell us about that one? The 426C.modcore C4B trial is another phase one study focused on safety and immunogenicity. Yeah. What's interesting here is the specific vaccine candidate itself and the adjuvants it's being tested with the 3M052AF adjuvant and alum. As we mentioned, adjuvants play a crucial role in enhancing the immune response to a vaccine. Right. This trial was planned for the United States with a start date in December 2025 and is sponsored by NIAAD and HVTN. It seems like the selection of the right adjuvant is a really critical aspect of vaccine development. Okay. Then we have the CH505 TS trimmer phase one trial with a later start date in 2027. What's the focus of that study? This trial is specifically designed to assess the safety of the CH505 TH trimmer vaccine candidate and how well it can trigger an immune response. The term trimer refers to the three-part structure of the HIV envelope protein that this vaccine aims to mimic. The goal is to induce antibodies that can effectively neutralize the virus. Okay. This phase one trial was planned for the United States with a start date in August 2027 and is sponsored by NIAA. Now, this next one takes a bit of a different approach, the BELIEVE trial, which is looking at the BCG vaccination. For those who might not know, that's the vaccine commonly used to prevent tuberculosis. What's the connection to HIV research here? This is a really fascinating area of exploration, actually. The BELIEVE trial is investigating whether the BCG vaccine, which is known to stimulate the immune system in a general way, can have any effect on the latent HIV reservoir in people who are already living with HIV and are receiving effective treatment. The latent reservoir the hidden virus. Exactly. Even when someone with HIV is on successful treatment, the virus can hide in a dormant state in certain cells. This is the latent reservoir. The BELIEVE trial is exploring a potential way to reduce the size of this hidden reservoir. This Phase 2A trial is taking place in Switzerland and started in January 2024, sponsored by the University of Zurich. That's an interesting angle, potentially repurposing an existing vaccine to address a key challenge in HIV treatment. Huh. We also have the GS1966 GS1144 Phase 1B trial sponsored by Gilead Sciences. Yes, this Phase 1B trial is evaluating the safety of two different experimental HIV vaccine regimens, GS1966 and GS1144, both developed by Gilead Sciences and how well they can trigger an immune response. It's another example of pharmaceutical companies actively contributing to the search for an effective HIV vaccine. And this trial is taking place in the United States. 
Moving over to the UK, we have the Chatox one dot HIV cons v sixty two dash MVA dot THIV cons v four trial from the University of Oxford. That's quite a scientific name. What exactly is being tested there? Yes, the names can be quite technical. Um, this trial is assessing the safety and immunogenicity of two different vaccine candidates, Chatox one dot HIV cons v sixty two and MVA dot THIV cons v four. These are different types of what we call viral vectors being used to deliver HIV genetic material into the body and stimulate an immune response. The trial is taking place in the United Kingdom, sponsored by the University of Oxford. And still in the UK, we have the HIV cons VX phase one trial, also from Oxford University. What's the underlying strategy for this vaccine candidate? The HIV cons VX vaccine candidate is designed with a very specific goal in mind, to induce T cell responses against what are known as conserved regions of the HIV-1 proteome conserved regions, yeah. the unchanging parts. That's right. Think of HIV as having many different outfits. It can wear different genetic strains. However, there are some core pieces of clothing that it always has on these the conserved regions. By targeting these unchanging parts of the virus, the hope is that the vaccine could generate a broader and more long-lasting immune response that works against many different HIV strains, no matter how they might mutate. Interesting strategy. This phase one trial is evaluating its safety and immunogenicity in the UK, sponsored by the University of Oxford. Now we're back in the US with a couple of mRNA and protein vaccine trials from IAVI, both focusing on EODGT860. What's the distinction between these two trials and what are they hoping to achieve? Okay, so these are two related phase one trials, both centered on the EODGT860 molecule, which is engineered to elicit those broadly neutralizing antibodies against HIV, the special ones that can fight off many strains. Right, the BNABs again. Exactly. One trial is using an mRNA delivery system. Think of mRNA like a set of instructions that tells your body cells how to produce the EODG860 protein. Like the COVID vaccines. Sort of, yeah, using that technology. The other trial directly delivers the EODGT860 protein itself as the vaccine. This allows researchers to compare the effectiveness and safety of these two different ways of getting the body to encounter this potential weapon against HIV. Comparing mRNA versus protein delivery. Got it. Both trials are taking place in the United States and are sponsored by IAVI. This really highlights how cutting-edge vaccine technologies are being applied to the challenge of HIV. It certainly does. We also have the BG505 SOSIP trimer vaccine phase one trial taking place in the Netherlands. This sounds similar to the IAVI C101 trial we discussed earlier. You're right, there are similarities in that this trial also focuses on a BG505 SOSIP trimer, which is designed to induce those broadly neutralizing antibodies we talked about. However, this is a separate phase one trial being conducted in the Netherlands and sponsored by AMC Medical Research. Different research groups might be exploring slightly different versions or formulations of similar promising vaccine candidates, you know? Right, exploring all the angles. And finally, in terms of our listed trials, we have the HVTN-124 phase one trial. What's being evaluated in this study? HVTN-124 is evaluating the safety and immunogenicity of two vaccine candidates. AD26.MOS4.HIV and a Clade C GP140 vaccine that's been enhanced with an adjuvant called aluminum phosphate. Clade C is a particularly common subtype of HIV found in certain parts of the world. Ah, so targeting a specific common strain. Exactly. This phase one trial is taking place in the United States and is sponsored by HVTN. Phew. That's an incredibly comprehensive overview of the HIV vaccine trials that were underway as of April 2025. It really underscores the multifaceted nature of this research and the um, significant dedication of the scientific community. But our sources also highlight that progress isn't solely focused on vaccines, right? There are also exciting developments in HIV prevention and treatment. Absolutely. Yeah, while the search for a broadly effective vaccine remains a top priority, there have been significant advancements in other critical areas. One particularly exciting development is Lena Kapavir. This is an investigational long-acting injectable drug developed by Gilead Sciences. Lena Kapavir. Data from phase one studies presented by Gilead suggest that it has the potential to be used as a once yearly option for pre-exposure prophylaxis or pre-PKP. Once yearly, wow. Yeah. For those who might find it challenging to adhere to a daily pill regimen, a once yearly injection could be a real game changer in terms of convenience and effectiveness in preventing new HIV infections. Gilead was planning to launch a phase three trial in the second half of 2025 to further investigate this potential. Once yearly PPP, that could really transform prevention efforts, particularly in reaching more people. That's huge. What about the research into broadly neutralizing antibodies or BNABs? 
Our sources mentioned some very promising results in infants. Yes, this is another area showing great promise. Research coming out of the Africa Health Research Institute has indicated that BNAVs could play a really important role in reducing the amount of virus in the body, particularly in infants who are born with HIV-1. Mm -hmm. In their study, they administered two different BNAVs to a group of children who had been on standard antiretroviral treatment since birth. What was remarkable is that 11 out of the 25 children were able to maintain very low levels of HIV-1 RNA below 400 copies per milliliter for a period of 24 weeks while only receiving the BNAB treatment without their regular antiretroviral drugs. Without their regular drugs, just the BNABs. Just the BNABs for that period. This suggests that BNABs could potentially help control the virus and perhaps even lead to periods of treatment-free remission, mm -hmm. especially started very early in life. That's incredibly encouraging news, especially for infants. It really emphasizes the comprehensive strategy we're taking against HIV, not just working on preventing new infections, but also finding innovative ways to manage the virus and potentially achieve remission for those already living with it. It does, and it's important to keep in mind, as our sources remind us, that clinical trials are a dynamic process. Mm -hmm. You know, the timelines, the participants involved, the eventual outcomes, they can all evolve as more data becomes available. Right, things change. And our sources also included a really important point about some recent challenges facing the research community, specifically mentioning funding cuts that have impacted some HIV vaccine trials in South Africa. That's a critical piece of the bigger picture, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Scientific research doesn't happen in isolation, and consistent funding is absolutely essential. Unfortunately, our sources indicate that some really important HIV vaccine trials in South Africa have experienced delays and, well, in some cases, have even been put on hold due to recent reductions in funding. Right. This really underscores the ongoing need for a sustained financial commitment to this vital work and highlights the very real challenges that researchers on the front lines can face. It's a sobering reminder that while we're seeing significant scientific progress, mm -hmm. it's not always a smooth or guaranteed path forward and can be influenced by external factors. Precisely. So as we bring this deep drive to a close, what are your main takeaways from all of this for you and for our listeners? For me, the sheer number of different vaccine approaches being explored is really striking, you know, from novel viral vectors like the gorilla one to mRNA technology and these clever mosaic immunogens. It feels like there's a huge amount of scientific energy focused on this challenge. And then when you combine that with the progress we're seeing in prevention, things like long acting PAPREP and the potential of BNABs in treatment, it feels like we are making really significant progress on multiple fronts simultaneously. I agree completely. The landscape of HIV prevention and treatment is continually advancing, and it's all driven by this rigorous and innovative scientific inquiry. For you, keeping abreast of these developments offers a valuable perspective on where we currently stand in this ongoing global effort. And for anyone who wants to delve even deeper into the specifics of these trials, our sources rightly point to resources like clinical trial registries, such as clinicaltrials.gov, and the official communications from the organizations sponsoring this research. Those are the best places to find the most current and detailed information. That's excellent advice. Yeah, those are the primary sources for the most up-to-date details on these trials and many others. So as we conclude this deep dive, here's a final thought for you to consider. Given the rapid pace of advancements we're seeing in both HIV vaccine research and in preventative treatments like these longer acting PREP options, what might the overall landscape of HIV prevention and management realistically look like in the next 10 years? It's a question that the ongoing work we've discussed today will hopefully help us answer in profound and impactful ways. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive.